Welcome to Brazos Matters. I'm Jay Sokol. You ever been asked if you could go back to your high school or college days? Would you do it? I mean, I think we've all been asked that question. And sometimes I kind of think, sure, I might. But most of the time, the answer is no. Um, when I came to Texas A&M in 1987, there were the usual temptations for a young person away from home for the first time. Alcohol was everywhere. Recreational drugs weren't too hard to find. Looking back, the social norms to steer us away from those things really didn't exist yet. So flash ahead to today, and some of those same trappings remain, but new ones do too. Super scary things like fentanyl and even seemingly tamer addictive habits like vaping. So I know that's not a real bright, cheery topic, but educating young people about the dangers of these things is a primary focus for at least one group in Aguilea. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service with help from the Texas Department of Transportation. We're going to learn about those efforts and how messages are actually reaching the young people who need to see and hear them. So our guest today is with AgriLife's Reality Education for Drivers program and Watch Your Back representative. We're going to learn about those today. So let's say hello to Mary Jo Prince. Hey, Mary Jo. Hello, Jay. Was, Great to be with you today. That was a long wind up, wasn't it? That, hey, great. that's the best intro I've had. We have known each other a long time. Like 90, 95, 96? Oh, I, yeah. I was a yeah. child back then. Me too. What a coincidence. I know. Okay, so the two programs that I mentioned, Reality Education for Drivers, the RED program, mm-hmm. And watch your back, which has a, a special spelling that you can talk about. Sure. Would you explain each one of those for us? I would be glad to. Okay. The Watch Your Back program is our actual grant funded program through TxDOT, and it covers a lot of different uh, arenas in the alcohol and drug education awareness uh, uh, spots. And our goal with Watch Your Back across the state is to educate to build awareness to both young people as well as even the adults, parents, because this is a crazy world we live in. Mm. And and TxDOT gives us that opportunity at no charge to travel the state to visit with schools, organizations, church groups, scout groups, uh, teachers, uh, to let them know what's going on. Because we, this is our mission to stay on top of of the trends, of uh, what the risks, the consequences. Uh, and so that is the goal and the mission of Watch Your Back. And Watch Your Back, that's B-A-C, hmm. blood alcohol concentration levels, okay. uh, which is foreign language to some. Uh, but that is where it all, it all stems from. We, we educate the, the kids, uh, young people, about... They have to know that, A, even if they're under 21, it is illegal anywhere to consume, attempt to purchase, or purchase alcohol. Uh, And should they make that choice, their blood alcohol concentration will determine the consequences of that choice. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's the Watch Your Back uh, program. The Reality Education for Drivers program, or otherwise known as the RED program, is a specific program where we deal primarily with Class C misdemeanor uh, offenders that have been referred to us by judges, municipal courts, JPs, that gives them that second chance to get a ticket off of their record. Mm. Um, and so it's a four hour free, it's a free again program. And uh, we usually average about anywhere from 25 to 30 students per class. And we cover the five high risk factors of driving, uh, for, especially for young people. Uh, that includes impairments. Uh, drowsy driving, distracted driving, uh, wearing your seatbelts, uh, and speeding. Mm. Speeding has become very, very prevalent in uh, the, the causes of crashes. And so, and, and you know me well enough to know, uh, I don't teach, I don't preach, I share. Mm-hmm. My classes are very interactive. I'm Because in this day and age, you know that if you're not engaging students and making it fun and making them laugh a little bit, you might as well be talking to the wall. And so I do make it fun. I, I, I don't judge because I, you know, the old saying, been there, done that. Um, as a student right here at Texas A&M back in the 70s, mm-hmm. uh, we had to make choices. They're a little more dangerous these days. And, uh, but we had to make the same choices at different levels. And 
making the right choices can help prevent the deadly consequences. And so, you know, just because, too, if you turn 21, it doesn't give you the right, and it is against the law, to uh, drink, do drugs, and get behind the wheel. Yeah. And so that that's kind of a capsule of both of our programs. But bottom line, our goal is for both programs is to save lives. Right. And that's it, along with our uh, more than 254 uh, AgriLife Extension agents across the state. So I bet in your presentations you have some interesting and scary statistics. What are some things that sort of stand out in your mind that we may not be aware of? Yeah, yeah. Uh, back even as uh, early as last year, uh, more than uh, 1,100 fatalities occurred across the state of Texas, mm -hmm. and they were all due to alcohol consumption. And that was more than a fourth more than a fourth of all fatalities on our roadways. And that is just something we are working so very hard to bring down. Uh, we are also, you know, again, trying to work with our young people to let them know that when they make a choice to, that would cause a crash that could lead to a fatality uh, and or serious injury, that it doesn't just affect them. It yeah. affects everyone involved. And so uh, we, you know, those are the, that's one of the stats that's that's so very important. Um, I'm not a, a statistics oriented person, and the other um, uh, message that we try to convey, Jay, is that every time a crash occurs or something like that happens, it's not just about the numbers. It's they're behind every number. There's a, a grandmother, yeah, or a grandfather. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but the, the the numbers for our fatal crashes just continue. You know, they they are going. They will continue to go up until the education process is at full effect. Okay, so I have a question, mm -hmm. because there seems to be a culture, at least here, sure. at Texas A&M, and, sure. and I would assume in almost any community that has a, a college or university, mm -hmm. like it is, it's become socially acceptable now for ride-sharing, whether it's Uber or Lyft and so forth, and I mm -hmm. know parents who are comforted that their kids will use that as a choice uh, of getting home when mm -hmm. they've been out drinking or whatever. That's a comfort to the parents, right? And the kids don't seem to mind doing it. See, my assumption would have been that that the numbers would have decreased, but you're saying that's not true. No. If if everyone took a ride share home, those numbers might be going down. Huh. But even looking at our own headlines right here in our own community, it's it's not just a statewide problem or an, it's it's a Brazos County, Brazos Valley challenge. Mm. Um because they, you look at, see the parking lots that are filled, and the kids will get in their vehicle because, they, you know, everybody has to have their own wheels. Especially in Texas. In Texas. Yeah. And uh, just as an example, just last weekend, uh, where a young man, third time, third time arrest for DWI in three months, hmm. drove his vehicle into the Shipley's Donut shop out on Greens Prairie Road. Uh, thankfully, he survived. Uh, he had people and friends in his vehicle, um, and that's just one example. That's one example. And so we, our our message there, Jay, is to a have a plan yeah. before you go out. But we know we know that plans so called change. You get to a party and you're having a good time, and you go, okay, maybe just one drink or maybe just two, and then you try to get behind the wheel. And so the message is, have a plan before you go to your function. Uh, we encourage our, our students to uh, ask for Uber cards, uh, Uber gift cards, Lyft gift cards for oh. birthdays and Christmas and, and other occasions. Uh, and so then you put it on your account and it's, it's, e you know, it's easy to access. But um, you have got to... Make sure that you, if you do, when you do make your plans, a hundred percent sober driver. Yeah. Uh, just because someone has had four drinks and somebody else had six, that doesn't mean that that four drink person is is any more uh, sober. So, uh, but that's unfortunately that's the trend. You know, everybody has great intentions, but when you get into the the fun and the heat of the moment, then those plans change. We also um, we have uh, we'll have minor in possession. Uh, offenders that will come to our classes and they'll say well why do I have to take an MIP why do I have to take a red program I just got an MIP well just an MIP uh, has a different connotation 
to us, but um, what we want them to know, they could have been perfectly sober. Hmm. They could have been misjudged. The officer could have, you know, misjudged. But we want them to know the risks versus the consequences of getting into a vehicle with someone who has been right. drinking. And um, uh, and that it, and it's not just drinking anymore. Um, drugs have, have continued to play an increasing role in uh, the, you'll ask, you know, any of our law enforcement folks, it's, it's, tends to be more uh, the combination of drugs and alcohol yeah. and their offenses now. So. so when you and I were communicating before you came in for today's conversation, you mm-hmm. had mentioned that uh, that there's a current focus from you and your group on vaping and fentanyl. Talk about that. Yes. Uh, we do offer specific courses or, or specific programs, I should say, on vaping and fentanyl because it has become so prevalent. And when I say prevalent, it's not just in high schools, colleges. Uh, I did two programs uh, last week, one in Cameron, one in Beaumont, uh, for uh, middle schools hmm. to uh, present the, uh, the dangers and the risk of vaping. Um, they, they, a lot of adults and kids, not just kids, have been led astray by our hmm. vaping companies, who are also the same companies that own the cigarette companies, right. uh, that it's a, it's safer than cigarettes, which it's not. Um, nic- they think it's just nicotine, which isn't always nicotine. Uh, the young people can't see that the vapors affect their, go into their lungs, damage their lungs. So if, if and it could not, it could also not only be nicotine, we're looking at, at marijuana, cannabis, weed, and the dangers of now fentanyl used to be people would say i'm just i'm just vaping a little bit uh you know a little bit of weed uh or i'm just you know well there's not a substance around today that has not been found to have the possibility of being laced with fentanyl right and as we know young people are so um vulnerable Mm -hmm. easy to sway and they think well i'm going to order this vaping device without my mom knowing and I, it says it's nicotine. Well, you don't. If you don't know the person you're either buying from or ordering from, there's no telling what could be in in those vaping devices. And so we we really stress. For, and and we have to, the younger they are, the quick the sooner we have to reach them. Um, same with with you know beer companies. I remember the days we would you know here it was 18 to 49 i used to buy media for beer companies mm-hmm. and it was 18 to 49 not 21 to 49 and uh you may remember the days when cigarette companies would be out here in front of g raleigh white you know here come over here and take a putt <laughs> and oh sorry you missed but here's your pack of cigarettes uh-huh. so the, the the younger they can get to them the the younger they think they can you know wheel them in but uh vaping has long lasting effects if anybody wants to be an athlete at the next level and their lungs can't function, and the coach puts you in, and you drop back, and all of a sudden the the scoreboard's being real wavy, <laughs> and you're you can't breathe, and you pass out. Yeah, and so it's it's uh, and it's not pretty that you know. And Jay, what really um, affects me or gets to my heart is when because we canvas, we ask these kids, what is your motivation? Why? What makes you vape? And you get the usual, you know, it makes me look cool. No, it really doesn't. Um, all my friends do it. Oh, that's the oldest excuse in the book. Uh, but the one that gets to my heart is the one. It helps me calm my nerves and ease my anxiety. Wow. And it is very, at all ages, all levels. And, um, and I, I tell them or share with them, if you have got something on your mind and in your heart that is keeping you up at night, distracting you from, from driving safely, get help ask for help yeah. uh, because vaping will be a short-term prop a short-term solution to what could be a long-term problem and uh, it's it's a sign of strength to ask for help not a sign of weakness it's a sign of strength because no, we none of us get through this world alone nope and this is a crazy world right now and, and you know people uh, our lives were turned upside down four years ago mm-hmm. and and those effects are still lingering so uh and the people that they ask for help from that's what they love to do yeah that's what they love to do. trusted people at you know talk to not somebody that's going to lead you astray and and say oh just try this it's going to it's going to help you when it really doesn't surround yourself with the right people so if you just tuned in i'm jay sokol and you're listening to brazos matters my guest today is mary joe prince project coordinator for agrilife's red and watch your back programs okay so 
you've talked about getting in front of young people with these messages. Mm -hmm. It has to be more and more challenging to get them to pay attention because I remember, you know, Mm -hmm. past uh, campaigns, whether it was dare or scared straight Mm -hmm. or every 15 minutes, that sort of thing. And you know, it, there's a lot of kids who kind of roll their eyes and they're looking at the lame old people preaching at them. You've been in my class, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, how do you get past that? How do you, how do you reach them? My first step is I let them know that I care. Yeah. I let them know that I care, that I'm not just there for a job. Uh, I have one, you know, hat, several hats in my professional background, but it wasn't until I found this position and this opportunity to save lives that I found my passion. And I try to share that passion as, as strongly as I can with every program, no matter what program I'm doing. Um, I engage them. I ask them questions. I don't teach. I don't preach. I make sure that I hear their stories. And it also helps for them to tell story their stories for others in the class to say, hey, I'm not the only one that got a speeding ticket for going 100 miles an hour. I'm not the only one. Um, if I, I also make it realistic. Um, to, if I were conducting these programs, if we were conducting these programs 20 years ago, we'd be looking in their face and go, don't drink. It's against the law till you're 21. You mm-hmm. know, just, well, I might as well be talking to the wall. Right. Um, and so that's where we bring in the, con- we, we share actual news stories of real uh, crashes, real fatalities. Uh, There's one that we that we share that's uh, from uh, uh, Oklahoma, Tishomingo, Oklahoma, where six young girls left campus at lunch, high school girls, and none of them returned because of a crash that occurred. Uh, Six girls in a car built for four. So I showed, you know, how it's these crashes don't just happen uh, in big towns. They happen right here in Bryan College Station. They happen in places like Turkey, Texas, where we've done programs in Hmm. San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, um, Cameron, Texas, Beaumont, Texas, Burnett, um, that we, I try to make it relative to the areas that they are, uh, that they're living in. And then um, also we bring in responders. We bring in first responders that actually live it, breathe it, cry it, punch it out every day to tell them what they see. Um, every time they they are called to a crash and it's not just uh, a crash they don't you know sweep up the glass and go on okay next Mm. they see faces they see young people they see faces of their own children Uh, i've i've visited with with law enforcement and and both and fire uh, responders as well who have cried remembering crashes that they have responded to where they knew the person yeah uh and that tends to happen in in smaller communities Mm -hmm. like our own Mm -hmm. um and so I just, I make it as real. We make it all as real, and we make it relatable. We have programs for parents, too, um, to get them out of that, oh, my baby wouldn't, my baby wouldn't vape, my baby wouldn't do drugs. Right. And we, we have a, a program called uh, High in Plain Sight to where we set up a mock bedroom of what could be their own kid's bedroom that that USB uh, drive is not necessarily a USB drive. It could be a charging uh, uh, device for their vapes. Oh, wow. Uh, stash cans. That Pepsi can that's been sitting on their table for three weeks is mm-hmm. not just full of Pepsi. Uh, t-shirts, brands that, that they may see their kids wearing. Uh, t-shirts, sweatshirts that are drug culture related. And um, so we, we try to open up some eyes of you know, parents as well. And with our driving uh, traffic safety classes, sometimes we experience drivers need a little reminder too. So So back to what you were just saying about training the parents to Uh be able to spot certain objects in their kids' Uh rooms. Uh Have you ever had a parent come back to you and say, well, thanks to you, guess what I found? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, We have had parents that will either contact us after the fact or you can also kind of tell when you're in the program and you're sitting there, and the eyes get real big. <laughs> they don't want to say anything right there because they got friends, uh-huh. right, you know. But boy, I'm going home right now. I'm going to go home and check my kid's bedroom and, and you know, take charge. And 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 that's what you know. The, and and sometimes the flip side of that is the uh, vaping program that I did uh, last week in in uh, Cameron. 
uh, or in uh, Beaumont, one of the the young kids came up to me and said, "How can I stop my mom from vaping?" Hmm. And that's the one that real I just kind of have to heavy blink. But uh, I said, "Well, you tell her you love her. It's not your fault. You tell her that you want." You know, I said, "I used this as daddy psychology a long time ago." Daddy, I love you too much. You want to walk me down the aisle? Put that vape down. So mm. we it's a learning. We, we save lives of all ages, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I am curious, mm-hmm. when you when you lay out the information, whether it's um, Watch Your Back or mm-hmm. it's the, the RED program mm-hmm. and so forth, when you gather up your things and you back out of the room, mm-hmm. how do you know that that has made a difference? What is, what are, yeah. indications yeah. or measures of success for you we um we are not quote unquote research based we we don't go through those motions to get research companies but we rely a lot on feedback mm-hmm. um there are times that you know i just I, I say okay this is it i'm i'm done and then i get an evaluation from one of our students or i get an email from a student that will say miss prince i was going down the wrong path and your program helped me evaluate and reevaluate what I've been doing. Hmm. I had a young man that was here on the, trying to get on the A&M track team and it just didn't work. He went to went a little bit north of us and, and uh, tried his best. So uh, the evaluations, when they say, Miss Prince, I've, I'm going to change the way that I've been driving. I'm not going to pick up the phone. We also do follow-up surveys now uh, based on our grant objectives. Um, but it's it's that and kids they don't when they when they communicate they communicate otherwise they might just walk away and you never hear but when they have the time to share their opinion and and share what's on their heart and their head uh, to me it means something and so it's it's the personal feedback and 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 also from parents because if they're under 17 we do require it's our policy to have a parent or adult guardian attend with them and um we, you kind of see the eye, you know, uh, exchanges between mom and and uh, and uh, kiddo, and, and even the kiddos will point. Like if we talk about picking up the phone or or not wearing your seatbelt, even the young people will point at their mom and go, "She never wears her seatbelt." <laughs> and go, oh, okay, wow, okay. busted. Yeah. yeah. So so it's it really helps everyone, you know, because your the parents are the ones that the kids will be their role models forever good or bad yeah and whether it comes to you know driving or vaping or or doing drugs or alcohol and and that's something you know that's something we have to take into mind so real quickly how do things mm-hmm. like watch your back mm-hmm. and the uh, reality education for drivers program mm-hmm. how do those need to evolve do you think for the next generation of young people because you obviously you can't keep giving the same style presentation over and over and over it's got to evolve in some way right absolutely yeah. and and i uh, that is the the best question because i there are days that i go you know there's only so much i can say my dream next step would be to have the young people the student leaders the ones that that the it's you know peer pressure is very very real mm. And it can be very, very effective both directions. What I would love to see are the student leaders in the schools and colleges pick up the the you know the ball and run with it and say, "Hey, we, this is up to us. We want to cross the stage with the same people we came in to the university with, no matter what university that you're at or high school. We we've got to take ownership of this challenge uh, because you're right. You earlier said that yeah, that's just you know somebody. Sharon, you know, how, how does she know about it? Well, I was a teenager once. Mm-hmm. And that's what the we would love to see the young people supported by their parents, PTO groups, organizations, staff. Uh, a and I know, has a wonderful, wonderful student life uh, program and student health uh, department. Uh, we work with them a lot. And uh, so that's that's my dream is to be a leader, a coordinator for those types of programs uh, middle school, high school, college, take the lead. Be in something else I always share is, you know, we hear about, um, being an influencer. You got to have 7 million followers and 8 million followers. It takes one person to be an influencer in their school, in Mm -hmm. their environment, in their organization, in their church group. 
it's contagious. If one person says, I'm going to make the right choices so we can be here for a long time and come back to those so-called wonderful reunions 10 or 15 years down the road, you yeah. know, that that's, that's my, my, that would be my, my plan, Jay, uh, for the, the next step, then, you know, to, to get the kids uh, more involved and, and to take ownership of saving their own lives. Yeah. That's, you know, telling them everybody has value. Everybody has value. And some days we all, even as, as uh, adults know, if I rode off in the sunset, would anybody notice or, mm-hmm. you know, yes, everybody has value. And that's what, that's the underlying message that we have to, to present to. So if anybody would like to find out more about these mm-hmm. programs mm-hmm. or request a presentation from you in their classroom or with their group, mm-hmm. how do they, how do they go about that? I think thoroughly invite them to contact me uh, and again all of these programs are free mm-hmm. at no charge no matter where in the state uh, we they would like us to, to visit uh, call me at 979-321-5225 uh, or on by email at maryjo.prince at ag.tamu.edu okay and is there a minimum you know group size nope. for you to come talk to nope one I've, I've presented to as many as few as one and as many as 1200 so um and we customize um uh, we will you know I'm, a, I'm a, you know me i'm an old salesperson um and what i what we like to do is find out what the needs are of that specific organization or school because what may be a challenge in rockdale texas may not be a challenge in lubbock texas yeah so we customize we find out what the needs are of the community and the specific groups and then you know, uh, conduct the program accordingly. So in our last uh, minute or so, let me mm-hmm. just ask you, we're, we're recording this in the early part of November. Uh, where are some of your, your next stops? Where are you traveling to? Uh, we, I will go back to, um, uh, where am I going? Uh, Louisville, it? Louisville, okay. Louisville, Louisville, Texas, uh, right. in, a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll be back up in Mansfield, Texas. Um, you, you know, have programs will travel so kind of this part of the time of the year we kind of slow down I, w- I would like to add one other thing if we have one one minute yeah uh, i know we're recording this but uh november 7th will be the 24th anniversary of the uh number of deathless days on our roadways of texas that means not since november 7th of 2000 has there been a deathless day wow and that's called we want to end the streak and start a new streak so it's timing is is such so that's that full circle that's what we're here for mary joe prince thanks so much for being here jay sokol thank you for having me you bet brazos matters is a production of aggie lands public radio 90.9 kamu fm a member of texas a&m university's division of marketing and communications our show is engineered and edited by matt dittman all brazos matters episodes are available on youtube and on podcast platforms We hope that you would go there and rate and review and subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Jay Sokol. Thanks so much for watching and for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day.